Hi, Ashley here, and today I'm going to show you how to make a spawn bag. First, you need to pick out which type of grain you'll be using. I am going to do an experiment today and we'll be using Milo, Millet, and Whole Oat to see which grain will colonize the fastest. Our first grain is Milo. Milo is a very heavy grain and has a lot of inoculation points. Then we have Millet. Millet is even smaller than Milo and also has a lot of inoculation points. And Whole Oat is the lightest grain of them all and is the biggest grain but also absorbs a lot of water. So it's really good for the mushrooms as well. Next you'll need to measure how much grain you will need for each bag. I will be using a three pound spawn bag and I found that this cup that I'm using is perfect. If I measure three cups of each grain, it's exactly a three pound bag. The thing is, is Milo is a really heavy grain and whole oat is a really light grain. So if you try to actually measure out the weight of them, Milo will have less grain um, and be more dense and whole oat will have more grain and be less dense. So if you use the cup measure method, then you're pretty much guaranteed to get like a perfect measurement. Now you need to add water and a little bit of gypsum. Fill the bucket so the water is completely covering the grain and that there's enough room to soak up as much water as possible. Then you will need to add one teaspoon of gypsum per bucket. Gypsum helps add some minerals for the mycelium to digest as well as stops the grain from sticking and clumping together. I'm sorry, I did not get a video of myself adding gypsum to the buckets. I forgot. So make sure to add at least one teaspoon of gypsum per bucket and then mix it up and then close the lid off. And let it soak for 24 hours. Now we need to drain the grain and then fill our spawn bag. Now it's time to sterilize the bag. I will be using a six quart pressure cooker that I bought from Walmart for $20. These things are super cheap, but they have some downfalls that I'm gonna talk about later. The first thing that you'll need to do is find an appropriate spacer for the bottom of the pressure cooker. Lots of things can work for spacers. They just need to be able to withstand the heat and have enough room for airflow. Then add a few cups of water. You wanna make sure that you add enough water so that it doesn't evaporate by the end of your sterilization. Now fold the bag carefully on the creases with the filter facing out and place the bag long way so it doesn't catch on the release pin in the cooker. Then place a metal topper on the bag to prevent the bag from sticking to the release valve on the top of the pressure cooker. If you don't do this, it can cause a bomb and your pressure will, cooker will blow up. Then turn your stove on low heat and sterilize for two hours. From what I mentioned earlier, these pressure cookers have two main problems. First, I can only sterilize one bag at a time, and second, they heat up extremely fast and don't have a pressure gauge, so it's very easy to overheat and melt the bag. After two hours, turn off the stove and let the pressure cooker cool down. Then remove the spawn bag and place in a sterile container, and then let it cool down for 24 hours. If you inoculate your spawn when they're too hot, it will kill the spores. Now you can start the process over with your remaining bags. After all the hassle, I ended up upgrading my pressure cooker to the Presto 23 quart pressure canner or cooker. This thing is awesome and alleviates all of the problems that that one has. One, if you notice, this one can only do one bag. This one can do many. I can even have a second layer. Also, this pressure cooker comes with a sealer for the top already, which is super nice. And the top of the actual pressure cooker has a gauge. So now we can set the gauge to 15 PSI for two hours and we're ready to go. So simple and easy. After 24 hours, our spawn bags are cooled down and now it's time to inoculate them. First, you will need to make sure that you are in a sterile environment like in front of laminar flow or in a room that has no airflow. Then sterilize everything with alcohol. And now it's time to prepare our spawn bag. In this case, we're using a colonized spawn bag to inoculate our new sterile spawn bag. Break up the colonized grain and mix really well. 
Then start to prepare your spawn bags. Open up your spawn bags and prepare them for inoculation. Then cut a small hole at the top of your spawn bag. And for this experiment, I will be dividing the spawn bag equally between the three spawn bags. But this spawn bag could actually probably inoculate anywhere from five to seven bags, if not more. Then seal the bags. I use a vacuum sealer, but do not vacuum out the air. Just seal the bag. Then mix up the bags really well and reset them. Finally, set your bags in a dark, warm place for about 10 to 30 days and watch them fully colonize. Okay, so I am two days into my experiment to see which uh, grain will colonize the, fa the fastest. Uh, first, I have whole oat, which is doing pretty good, but I think that this will be the slowest. Then I have a Milo, which the Milo seems like it's just exploding. It's doing really well. And then I have Millet. And um, Millet is a really small grain and I thought that it would just colonize faster because it has more inoculation points, which if you kind of look at the back uh, between the Milo and the Millet, this looks like it's doing better, but this looks and feels, this is a lot heavier too, um, that it's just like just colonizing so much faster. So after two days, um, it's hard to tell really who's winning, uh, but they all look fantastic. Pull out. Milo. And millet. Millet smells terrible. I really dislike the smell of millet. <laughs> so yeah. See how it goes. Okay, so we are five days into my spawn bag experiment. And so far, I think that Milo is definitely doing the best. I wanted to show you guys. So we have whole oat. And I have actually made a line on the back of all of these to kind of show you how fast they're growing. And I made this line about 12 hour, hours ago, right before I went to sleep. Um, and here, it kind of shows you the progression. So like, hold is definitely going, but I only have like a half of inch here. Where look at Milo, Milo's almost like a full inch. It's just really progressing well. And then Millet, I mean, just barely is crossing this line. So in the end, I mean, Milo, Holt seem like they're colonizing faster, but Millet is definitely not far behind. So in the end, I think I'm gonna end up using a combination of all three of these, or possibly just whole oat and Milo, uh, or more maybe Milo and just Millet. So we'll see how things go. Looking super nice. Show you guys really quick. Milo. 